and welcome to my video today. If you're new to my channel, my name is Sarah and one of my passions in life is working with crystals and gemstones and the energy I feel is inherent within all of them. If you're one of my regulars, welcome back. It's good to be here with you again today for another crystal video. It's been a while since I've made a video about a specific stone other than Moldavite, my all-time favorite catalyst of transformation. But today I'm getting into a gem with something of a more arguably practical application in life. And that gem is citrine. Citrine is the lovely golden yellow sunshine shade gem in the quartz family. And the reason it's so popular among people is that it is known as the ultimate stone for manifesting wealth. When we live in a capitalistic society, as we do, money is a requirement for well-being. Now that wasn't always the case on this planet or any other planet. Money is a human invention, but it symbolizes the energetic exchange that goes on when someone provides a service or procures a good for someone else basically like tradesies, but taken to a systemic level where it becomes kind of controlled by government and corporations and people in power. For a lot of us, especially us starseed, new age, spiritual people, those of us who have our goals set on the higher truths and exploring realms of beauty and love and peace and happiness, where we sometimes feel that the world around us is toxic, that can be a huge downer. Especially in the crystal healing community, where we're discovering the innate connection that we have with Mother Earth and her resources, it can feel a little bit worldly and maybe low vibration to start thinking about money and the necessity to have money. This is where we get a little bit murky. I've heard so many people say that money is the root of all evil and that money is a bad thing. And yet those same people will complain if they don't have enough of it. I don't want to make this video to say we can all become billionaires or that we can all become millionaires even, but to say that we can break free from the obstacle which money presents in our lives. What do I mean by the obstacle money presents? What I mean is if you're struggling to pay your rent, if you're riddled in debt and you feel like it's an insurmountable goal to actually pay it off and live with a sense of freedom where you're not constantly worried about where your next check is going to come from, then manifesting wealth is something to start doing immediately. While citrine is the gem for manifesting wealth, the actual secret when it comes to crystal healing is that you don't actually need the gemstone. I'm not trying to put myself out of business here. Of course, I have an Etsy shop where I sell natural crystal and gemstone jewelry. But if I'm being totally honest, I have to tell you, you don't need to buy a piece of citrine, wear a piece of citrine, or have a piece of citrine in order to become the affluent, abundant creator of your own destiny that you were born to be. What you can do is start implementing the changes that citrine can catalyze. Now, what makes citrine a gem for wealth manifestation is that the golden shade of this beautiful stone, I'll hold some up so you can see what I'm talking about. Of course, I'm wearing a little bit on my earrings. I'm wearing a little bit dangling beneath my pendant, but here's a kind of a more close up view for you. The top stone in this pendant is Herkimer quartz. Then we have Moldavite. And then on the bottom, a really gorgeous golden faceted citrine. So the reason, getting back to my point, the reason citrine catalyzes the manifestation of wealth is that that golden yellow hue correlates with a chakra, an energy center within us called Manipuraka Chakra. Translated from Sanskrit, that directly means the city of jewels. 
What that means is the city of jewels, basically the castle, the palace of infinite riches is not something outside of us. It's within each and every one of us. In English, we typically refer to that center as the solar plexus or the seat of the will. It's found kind of behind your navel and slightly above. So if you put your hand like this and touch your belly button with your pinky fingernail, your solar plexus takes up this space. It's kind of that area between your belly button and your rib cage. When people talk about having a feeling in their stomach or butterflies in their stomach or nervousness in their stomach, usually where that sensation will arise will be the Manipuraka chakra, the solar plexus. When we have that chakra open and radiating energy and when we are in tune with it, we have confidence. We have the courage to move forward with the plans that we make in life and we feel innately successful because we understand we create our own success. When that chakra is blocked, that's when we get that queasy nervous energy where we know what we want, but we don't necessarily believe that we have it within our control to create it. As soon as something goes wrong in your life, you can kind of test to see whether your solar plexus is energized and open or working or not by checking. When something goes wrong, is the initial reaction to feel victimized by existence, like everything going on in your life has co co collaborated against you and held you down and other people are taking the promotions that you should get and other people are screwing you over and other people are in your way and it's that damn banking system and the monetary system that has set you up for failure. If that's the case, while all of those things might be technically true, that indicates that there's a block in the solar plexus. Now, if the same situation happens, things go wrong, you're feeling down on your luck, but the initial reaction is to strategize, what's the next step? Now, how can I shift this so that I have my success back? If some plan fails and you're immediately, you know what, maybe mourn it for a moment, feel that loss. There's nothing wrong, of course, with understanding where things have gone wrong and why. But if you feel ready to stand back up, try something new and create what you wanted, that's the indication of a solar plexus that is open, that is energized, and that is aligned with your higher possibility. There's a really cool channel who I love to watch, channeler who I love to watch. His name is Daryl Anka, and he channels Bashar. I've binge watched videos of his for like over a decade now, off and on. I recently came back to his teachings because I find them so powerfully applicable in my life. And what I'd love to share with you is Bashar's definition of abundance because I think this cuts to the core of what each and every one of us needs in order to live our best life. Bashar says that abundance is the ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it, period. That means abundance is not a big stack of money. It's not a mansion. It's not a high paying corporate job. It's not a bunch of crystals and gemstones and books as much as personally I think of those as my abundance. What abundance is, is the ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. So when I contemplate on Bashar's teaching, I immediately think of all the times in my life when I really wanted to do something, when I felt that that something was aligned with my destiny and it was my goal to do it, but I didn't have the money. Finding a way to do what I needed to do, regardless of how much it cost, shows me that in those moments I was in the flow of abundance. I'll give you an example. When I really, really, really wanted to have an enormous piece of Moldavite, and it was out of my budget, and it wasn't something I could pay for, but I felt for a long time that that was something 
you know, required for me. A nice piece was gifted by somebody who has supported my Etsy shop and who got my address off of the package. That's one way to manifest it. Now, by a linear way of thinking, if I wanted a big piece of that kind of stone, I would have thought, okay, I need to save up a couple thousand dollars, money that I'm not going to put towards my rent or taking care of my adopted cats or, you know, anything else. I need some extra cash, which is kind of hard for a lot of us to get, especially the economy being what it's been since the start of the pandemic, right? So letting go of the feeling that I need money to do it when it just made itself available, that's one way wealth can manifest. Now, I'm not saying that every single time we want something, the universe is going to just give it to us. It's more like when we believe that if we're meant to have it, it will appear. And if we're not meant to have it, we will keep living our best life aligned with what we feel is in our highest good. That is doing what we need to do when we need to do it. I think that first example was a little bit off. So I'll give another example. When I decided I wanted to start making YouTube videos, I had a really strong calling to start talking about the elements of the world that at that point in time I was referring to as a conspiracy against enlightenment. The fluoridated drinking water, the subsidies given to the meat and dairy industries, which are just abominably bad for animals. It's torturous. It's murderous. There's nothing but suffering in those industries. Besides that, it's ruining our planet. It's deforesting the Amazon rainforest. It's causing more carbon emissions and reducing more water than any other industry. And, you know, the television, the way the news is such a downer, and it fills us with fear and it fills us with dread. And when we're in school, we're taught as if the ultimate goal in life is to go to a university, get even more tens of thousands of dollars worth into debt and repeat, you know, that cycle that keeps going on and on. So I felt like part of my mission in life was to make videos about that. However, I had no platform, didn't know how to do public speaking, didn't know how to present myself on camera, didn't even have a camera. So I decided, and I was already listening to Bashar at that point in time, this is back in 2011, I decided instead of wishing that I had a videographer who could help me or a lighting person who could help me or a script writer who could help me, I decided I've got to do it myself. And this is when I really feel I was channeling that solar plexus energy, that willpower, that abundance frequency because I decided, you know what, if I feel so strongly that this is part of my purpose in life, it's my passion, it's something I want to pursue, then I need to tap into my own resources and figure out how I can do it. So back then, because cell phones did not yet have the high resolution video cameras that the iPhone through which I'm talking to you right now has, I got myself a little Sony Handycam I went to, I think it was Radio Shack, I don't remember exactly, but one of those stores that used to exist. And I just looked at all the video cameras, figured out which one was the cheapest, which one was the easiest to use, which one I could just plug into my laptop to upload a video from. I waited until it was on sale at like the best possible price, bought it and started. And the first couple of times I filmed videos, guys, they were not good. It didn't come naturally to me. I felt awkward talking to a camera. The lighting was horrendous. I did them indoors in a dark room with the windows closed and set up lamps, which is the opposite of what you should do if you want like a good, soft, natural lighting. But you know what? Being able to just start was exactly what I needed to do, and I did it when I needed to do it. It's taken me a few years to figure out sitting next to a window, having that soft light come through, partially closing the curtain so that it's not too harsh, avoiding too much shadow, 
you know, angling the camera so it's a front facing view instead of like aim down at me from above like those unfortunate selfies of the early 2000s. <laughs> Things take time. But when we're in the flow of abundance, we're not afraid to take the first step, even if it feels like we don't have everything we need yet. The reason I think all of this relates to the energy of Citrine, the energy of abundance, the energy of Mahalakshmi, the goddess of wealth, who I'm wearing in the form of this pendant and these earrings today, the reason I feel this is so pertinent to that message is that a lot of the times, when the solar plexus is blocked and we know what we want to do, we have a feeling for what we need to do, but we also feel like first we have to get something else. That's what pushes our goal further and further and further into the distance. If I had sat there back in 2011 thinking, I have a message, I would love to put it on YouTube, but first I need a ton of money to hire somebody to help me film it. Or first I need to buy like a state of the art thousand dollar camera. Or first I need to get some studio lighting. I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking to you today. If I had waited until I had all the right stuff and all the right resources, I never would have started. So when you have a goal and you want to manifest wealth or you want to manifest a new career or you want to manifest a beautiful place to live or whatever else it might be, instead of deciding what you need and then wishing you had it, start deciding what you would do right now if you already had the resources and do the best equivalent version that you can with what you have available. I'll give you another example. Back in 2014, when I found myself at a crossroads in life, I didn't really know what I wanted to do as a career anymore. I didn't want to work retail, which I had done in my early 20s. I didn't really want to go back to art school because academia just felt so fake to me. I didn't really like the idea of filling my mind with other people's opinions of what's good art and what's bad art like that just good for some people wasn't for me i no longer really felt like giving tarot card readings professionally was aligned with the space i was in i decided that i would paint scarves with abstract patterns kind of like the drawings i do in some of my other videos i'll show you right now I do like abstract drawings. That's another passion of mine. So I decided, you know what? I've got some beautiful fabric paints. I've got some fabric. I'll just paint some scarves and start an Etsy shop and sell them. So I did. After like a week, zero scarves had sold. People weren't feeling them. And I get that. Not everyone shares the same style. Maybe they weren't you know, there are other shops selling nicer scarves and people will go to those ones. That's okay. But instead of deciding that my idea was a failure and that I had no way of making a living with it, I started looking around to see what else am I talented at? What else do I have to offer? What else do I love to do? And of course, my mind went to crystal healing and working with gems. I had amassed quite a huge collection of crystal and gemstone beads from the years I spent living in Vancouver where pretty much every extra check that I had went to crystals because I had fun exploring their various energies. And so I thought, okay, instead of painting scarves, what would happen if I make some of my leftover beads into bracelets and put them online to sell? Within two days, I sold out of every single bracelet that I had made and almost immediately reviews started coming in that were five star, super positive, people were loving them. When I first started that Etsy shop, I had no money in the bank. I had no savings. I couldn't go out and invest in materials to make the bracelets because I didn't have money to spend on that kind of stuff. So I took what I had put that up for sale, and when it sold, I took the income 
and invested that into more beads and nicer tools and better stringing material. And I just kept going like that until I had built up a full-time successful business that is now my main source of income. That's the main thing I do. So you can start from the bottom. You can start from where you are and apply that same model in your own life with whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's making art, whether it's making music, whether it's offering consultations to people, no matter what it is that you want to do, if you think of your long-term goal and what you want, in my case, that was I wanted to be self-employed. I wanted to make things that other people would love to have that can be beneficial in their lives, that would be creatively fulfilling for me. And I did it. And yeah, like I said, now it's not like I'm loaded with cash. It's not like I bought my own mansion. It's not like I'm driving a sports car, but I never have to worry about how I'm going to pay my next month's rent. If I have an idea for something I need to do, I consider myself wealthy as per Bashar's definition of abundance. I never have to turn down an opportunity with money as the excuse or with the lack of money as the excuse. I feel I always have what I need to have in order to do what I need to do. And so do you. And I know like this can be triggering for a lot of people because we have been raised in a capitalistic society that tells us some people are haves and some are have not. Some people are rich, some people are poor. If your parents were rich, you'll be rich. If your parents were poor, you'll be poor. If you're not university educated, you won't be able to build something of yourself unless you get lucky. All of that is outdated. All of that linear 3D thinking is related to the world of the 1960s and 70s. Like we are so far past that. I was listening to a really cool video yesterday. I'll try to find the name of the guy in the video. I'm so sorry. I don't remember what his name is as I'm about to quote him. But he was describing the difference between third dimensional thinking and five dimensional thinking. And just forgive me if this is too new agey, too out there for you, but I find it really helps me to understand these things. And he said like the earthbound third dimensional thinking is thinking you need to work hard to get something. You need to plug yourself into a system that has already been created in order to get the wealth that you need to live your best life. And so that thinking is the thinking where a certificate or a diploma is a requirement, where you have to get a credential before you'll be able to apply for a job. And then you apply for a job, you have to get hired in order to start doing it. Once you're hired and you're doing the job, you have to prove your worth to the boss to get a promotion or to get a raise. And that's how you work your way up in the world. To a lot of us, that sounds equivalent of giving up. Like, I don't know about you guys, but for me personally, the idea of working for somebody else, slaving away so that they can achieve their dreams, to me, that sounds kind of, kind of culty, kind of like a waste of my time, kind of like even if I get money at the end of the day, I'm not going to feel successful within myself. So then he described fourth dimensional thinking and mentioned the secret. And I'm sure we all know what the secret is. If you're watching this kind of video, you've probably seen the secret. And in the secret, it's all about envisioning your goal, focusing on your goal, thinking about your goal, reminding yourself of your goal and dream boarding it, you know, putting pictures of the stuff that you want up so that they stay within the realm of your mental space. That is the fourth dimensional way of manifesting where it's still related to the thing that you want to have that you don't have yet and tricking yourself into feeling like you have it by constantly thinking about it. I shouldn't say tricking, that, that kind of makes it sound negative, but like the dream boarding stuff, it works if you really apply it and focus on it, but it's kind of hard to do. The fifth dimensional thinking is where 
what you want is so aligned with who you are that you're meant to have it. So by the time you even have the feeling of desire for it, existence already wants to give it to you because you're wanting it because you're meant to be having it. And so there's no need for the vision board. There's no need for the visualizations. The mere fact that you want that thing or to do that thing or to be that thing means you are that. It's just a matter of letting go of all the negative external input that tells you it's impossible or that you're not meant to have it or that you're not meant to do it. The five dimensional thinking, the five dimensional manifestation is what I feel Citrine catalyzes. Because the open activated solar plexus, that Manipuraka chakra, that city of jewels is already within you. When you meet somebody who thinks outside of the box, and you probably are somebody who thinks outside of the box, when you have an awesome idea that nobody has ever thought of before, that's wealth. If you have that idea and decide, you know what, this would be great if I had the resources to invest in it, I would take it forward and make it into a reality. It's never going to be a reality. But if you have a great idea and decide, you know what, this is such a good idea. If I just start working towards it, I'll figure out how to make it. That's the 5D thinking. That is you taking action, investing in yourself, strengthening your Manipuraka Chakra and building the, the foundations of your success, really taking that inner city of jewels and bringing it outward. I hope this wasn't too confusing. I hope this was making sense for you. The last thing I want to share in this video is that I've noticed for me, the reason I think of the gods and goddesses of Sanatana Dharma, of Hinduism, like Mahalakshmi, whose temple jewelry I've been working with in my shop, the reason I think of these beautiful beings, these deities, and the energy in gemstones as being something tangible and real, not merely placebo, not just wishful thinking or magical thinking, it's because when I connect with those energies, good things actually physically happen. And I'll share a couple of examples of that too, because there can't be a video about manifesting wealth without mentioning the goddess of wealth and abundance and generosity. So there was a time, this would have been, what year? 2014, I think. I, I can find out the exact date next time I talk to my mom. But I had some deity cards that I bought in temples in India. Pictures of Kali, who's my Ishta Devata, pictures of Shiva and Shakti, pictures of Mahavishnu, Rama and Sita. And among these temple pictures, I had a duplicate of a picture of Lakshmi. It was so beautiful that I bought two. So I gave one of those to my mom and I just spontaneously told her, if you connect with Lakshmi, she's the goddess of wealth, ask her for anything, she'll give it to you. I was in one of those like really high frequency excited states that we sometimes get into when we channel or when we connect with the divine and we just feel like everything we're doing is blessed. So I just randomly blurted out to her like, ask Lakshmi for a boon, she'll give it to you. My mom didn't tell me what she asked for at that time, but she got in touch with me about a week later and told me that one of her best friends runs an at-home cat shelter and that she has a lot of special needs kitties with really complicated medical issues and that her vet bill was just enormous. And she told me that when she looked at that picture of Lakshmi, she felt like if she asks for something for herself, that would be just taking advantage. Like she already owned her house and her car. She was in a good place. She didn't need anything. So she asked Lakshmi for her friend's vet bill to be paid off completely. So fast forward, about a week after she set that intention and requested that boon of Lakshmi, she finds a newspaper article in the Lethbridge Herald saying that an anonymous donor had gone into, I think it was the Green Acres Animal Hospital, 
and randomly paid off a couple grand, like the entire vet bill. And my mom said she just teared up, like she had tears running down her face and said, thank you, Lakshmi. Some people might say it's a coincidence and that whoever paid off that vet bill was already an animal lover, already knew the lady who had the shelter, already wanted to make that payment. But if you really feel that connection with the deities, you'll see coincidences like this happen over and over and over again where exactly the thing that you ask for happens. And that's where I believe there is so much more happening in this world and in space, in the different lokas, in the different, what would you call it? The different dimensions, I guess. So much more is happening than what we understand or what we've been taught or what can be calculated or proved. That whether you believe in it or not, having some fun playing with it and exploring it, it can't hurt, right? Like. If you're a skeptic or an atheist or you don't believe in Lakshmi, I'm not here to convert you. Like, quite frankly, I don't care what you believe because if you're happy and you're living your best life and you don't want to believe in something, more power to you. Like, that's awesome. But if you're a little curious and you want to test it out and you're like a little open-minded where you don't believe in something, but maybe it's true, just have a little fun with it. Ask Lakshmi for something specific and just see what she does. You know, if you want to do it visually with a picture, the way my mom did it, the way I've done it a few times in life, you can Google a picture of Lakshmi and just look at it on your desktop or on your cell phone and just ask her for whatever random financial or wealth related boon you'd like or having a piece of jewelry like this one that has a, an image of Lakshmi sitting within it, or taking a piece of the gem Citrine, which vibrates to that same Lakshmi frequency. Like you'll probably notice if you've looked at my Etsy shop over the years, almost every time I make a piece of Lakshmi jewelry, like this men's bracelet I made here that has a Maha Lakshmi sitting on trying to do the beauty vlogger thing where the background is less confusing so it focuses on her but where there's a Lakshmi I almost always include citrine gems along with her so whether you're using an actual physical deity or going to a Lakshmi temple which can be a little difficult if there's a lockdown where you are or if you're just looking at a picture of her online have a little fun with it I think sometimes we take spirituality too seriously and we get so caught up in the dogmas and the rules and the rituals that we feel we don't have the right to connect with the deity or to ask for a boon unless we purify ourselves first or do a worship ceremony first or chant the right key words first. But the way I feel is that these benevolent beings they don't get any bigger, better, brighter, happier, or more fulfilled by us worshiping and praising them. They are that. She's already in the constant flow of wealth. She's already got everything ever needed to fulfill everyone's highest good, the ability to do what everyone needs to do when everyone needs to do it. So she's not waiting for us to connect with her the right way. She's just waiting for us to connect with her. You know, a dear friend of mine recently said that he feels it's like the moment we take one step in that direction, they come running to us like a million miles per hour. And I feel that is so true. The moment you just say, hey, Lakshmi, help me out here. I need some money. I need this. I need that. She is on it. She wants to be on it. She wants to help. And similarly, when you start working with Citrine, a lot of people ask me, how do you work with crystals? How do you do crystal healing? And the ultimate answer is there is no one way to do it. For me, if I want to connect with a specific crystal energy, I take a piece of jewelry that incorporates that gem and I just wear it until I feel like that energy 
is working, until it's activated in me, until it's happening. When one of my aunties put a house up for sale a few years ago and was having trouble selling it, I found a web page that suggested put a citrine stone in each window. We did that, the house sold. You know, whether this is, again, coincidence or whether it's really happening, it literally does not hurt to try. Who's it gonna hurt if you ask Lakshmi for a boon? Who's it going to hurt if you start carrying a piece of citrine around with you? At the absolute worst, the placebo effect it's going to have is that you give yourself permission to become successful. When you start wearing something as a talisman, whether that talismanic energy starts manipulating the subtle currents of energy around you, making shifts, making things happen, bringing you into the best possible situations, bringing you affluence and abundance, or whether having that talisman around you reminds you of your goals and helps you stay focused and reminds you to be confident and to do as much as you can, either way, it gets that ball rolling and before you know it, you will have turned a handful of bracelets into an Etsy shop that can be your full-time job. Or you would have turned an idea for a short story into a blog where you can get some sponsors or where you can put up some ads or where you can possibly even sell your work to become an ebook or to become like a full published physical book, which some of us, myself included, still love to read. So whatever it might be, abundance is taking that seed and planting it and watering it and shining the sunlight and letting it grow. Abundance, the ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. It is such a beautiful principle for life. It's such a great formula. Let go of that feeling that you need money and suddenly all the money that you do need will come to you. And again, it sounds like a catch-22. Like, don't worry, if you're yelling at the screen saying, Sarah, why did you say, decide I don't need money and then I'll get the money I need, that means I need it. What I'm saying is, let go of the fear of failure so that you can achieve success. Let go of the feeling that you don't have money because the harder you feel you've been deprived of it, the further you push away existence deciding to shower you with it. If you do everything in your power to achieve your goals, existence will meet you halfway or meet you a third of the way or meet you a tenth of the way as far as you can get on your own. But if you put your all into it, you will achieve that success. I really hope this was helpful. If anything was left unclear, if anything's a bit confusing, or, and hopefully this is the case, if it made so much sense or you have some examples for your life of how you've achieved success despite the perceived lack of resources, I would love to hear about it. And if you're interested in the Maha Lakshmi and the Citrine jewelry I've showed you in this video that I'm wearing, you're more than welcome to check out my Etsy shop. I'll put the link in the video description. And if you watch this video and you want some citrine for yourself, you can buy literally anything in my shop except for the, uh, the strings or the postcards because those ship flat and I can't bulk up the envelopes or else the shipping fee is astronomical for me. But if you buy any piece of jewelry from my shop, whatever stone it might be, I will include a free citrine charm for you if you mention this video. So like I said, thank you so much for tuning in. All the best on your journey of manifestation. You can do it by nature of the fact that you watched this entire darned video all the way to this point means you are meant to do it. And I can just feel Mahalakshmi gazing down so lovingly at you as that divine mother, as that source of abundance. I can feel Bashar laughing that we're putting his words into practice, Google his videos, that's a whole other trip. They're very addictive and very helpful. And yeah, and I can feel that citrine just radiating that golden light that you will be radiating to with that open solar plexus as you make your goals reality, as you manifest wealth.
thanks so much. I can't wait to connect with you further on this journey. From here on, every week I'm going to make a new video, each time about a different gemstone and what that gem catalyzes in our life and how. So if you like this, if there's another gem that you're interested in, or if there's something that you want and you're curious to know which stones are talismans for that, please let me know in the comments and I will get to work making a list for this playlist. Much love. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye.